to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 235. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week and checking out what's going on on the channel. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by. We have had a, a, several new viewers lately, so welcome to the channel, to our crafting bunch. And if you haven't already, please click that little red subscribe button down below and the little bell-shaped icon next to it if you click that and then click all that will let you know anytime I post a video which is always on Saturdays and Wednesdays and then whenever there happens to be some good yarn or pattern sales going on. So let's get started. I do have a finished object. If you follow me on Facebook which is Katrina Knits. Um, I tried to change it to Katrina's Creations but there's already one out there so I just left it at what it is but this is a knitted hat pattern. I made this the other week and debated whether to uh, write a pattern for it or not. You all said, some of you said at least, that you would like to have a pattern for it. So I knit it a second time and wrote the pattern for it. It's called the Off the Grid Beanie. Um, off the Grid because it's kind of in a grid pattern as you can see here but because this part shows better than this part, last time I had my horizontals and verticals mixed up, uh, but the horizontal lines show up really well. The vertical lines, not so much. So it's a grid, but it's slightly off. So that's where I came up with it. It's kind of a play on words because off the grid here in the US means you're not using the public utility system. Uh, you're usually getting your energy from like solar or something like that. I'm not. We are like paying every month for our electric. Um, thankfully, it's not too bad where we live. But anyway, that is the name of the pattern. It is a free pattern. You can get the link to it down below under Love Crafts where it says my pattern. So there's other patterns there. There's some knit patterns and some crochet patterns. Uh, some are paid for, some are free. This is one of the free ones. So yeah, help yourself to it, it's there. So that's my finished object, and that is one of the hats that is going to be going to charity. Not this time of the year. It's like almost 90 degrees outside. But uh, in fact, uh, if you hear the birds out in the background, we've got our, our back sliding glass door open. So yeah, we've got some air and the fans are running in here because it's warm inside the house. So. Let me show you what my works in progress are. Uh, the first is a crocheted project. This is for my granddaughter for uh, taking to her college dorm. As you are watching this, we are at her graduation, if you're watching this on Saturday. So she is graduating from high school. I'm feeling very old, but I'm very proud of her. And I felt she, she knows just what to say to a grandma. I showed this to her to see if it was okay and if she liked it. Uh, they were over our house on Thursday for music lessons, or on Monday. They came over Monday instead for music lessons. And I showed her this and, like I said, it made me feel so good. She said, Grandma, I can hardly wait. She, she loved it, but she was like, I've been telling all of my friends that you're making me an Afghan for my dorm. And that just made me feel so good because so many kids her age could care less about crochet or anything like that or anything homemade. They think it's very grandma-ish. But the fact she went and told all her friends about it and is that excited just ah, warmed my heart. So uh, yes. Anyway, here it is. I have actually started on the decreases. So let me see if I can get this held up all the way. So here's where it starts. This is a C to C, which means corner to corner. And I'm doing four rows and then changing colors. And let me see, at its widest, let me see if I can estimate here. At its widest, I would say it's about six feet because it's the width of me putting my arms out all the way and it's hanging over on both sides. So I would say it's about six feet square when it's gonna be done. And here's, here is where the widest point is, and you can see that I've gone up. I split this, this row here. I'm using four skeins of Premier Basics. Not this color, of course, but this is the one that has the ball band on it. 
um, and each skein has 359 yards or three, 328 meters. So um, I'm using two skeins to get the increases and then two skeins to do the decreases. So I split this right in the middle. And so two, two rows are with the first skein and two rows are with the, the second dark green skein. And now I have gone in, um, let's see, four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15 rows. So here it is up close. So you can see it. And a C2C pattern, it's done with double crochet, but you kind of are doing clusters of three and they tip different directions. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There you can see it really well. It looks complicated, but it honestly is one of the easiest things to make. Uh, if you would like to make one and you want to see a tutorial, there is a link you can click right here and that will take you over to a two-part tutorial that I did a while back. Um, it, the, the one tutorial is on the increases and the second tutorial is on how to do the decreases. So, like I said, it's very simple. If you can do a double crochet, you're fine. So, um, that's my crochet project. Now my knitted project, I am also making another afghan. It's afghan city around here lately. So here is, here is my afghan. And this is going to be, right now it looks like it's odd stripes, uh, but it is going to be plaid. So you can see last week I had, I don't remember if I had started the blue or not. I maybe had just started it. So this is the yellow and the blue, and then you can see I'm using that gold from Premier Basics up top here. The yellow and the blue are some Lion Brand Pound of Love that I had left over. I had, it was one of those, I mean, it's it's a huge amount. I think it's like 700 and some yards, and I only used maybe a third of it. So I'm trying to use it up, so. And these, I started to say troughs, but, uh, I don't know what you would call them. These gouges? No, it's not a gouge or a trough. Uh, anyway, these little sections, I called something last week and I can't remember what it was I called it. They're kind of like a little cha a channel. That's what I called it. It was a channel. I was like, I started to say canal. I was like, no, that's not right either. But these are a purled section. You can see on the back right here. They, they look knitted on the back. But on this side, because it's a purl stitch, you can see that it creates a channel. And I will be doing chain stitch up through this, which will create the plaid. And they are grouped in groups of two. Um, there's a 10 stitch in between the two channels. And there are a set of, there's three sets of two going across the afghan. So here it is so far. And then my last project, which is my, my purse project. Basically, it's something I keep that's small, like socks or a hat or something that I throw into my pocketbook. And that way it's something easy to make um, and carry with me. Because carrying an afghan is kind of impossible to do. So I try to carry something small. So I am making some hats for charity. Um, this is another one of the hats for charity, but it's not this pattern. This is another one I'm working on. I am going to do some crochet ones. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So, um, because in, in, I have this much blue yarn left and this would not be enough for crochet, but I can probably get a hat out of this because knitting uses a lot less yarn. So we're doing another knitted hat, which means I will have gotten three hats out of one skein of yarn. This one is also a design on my own, and I will probably write the pattern up for it. See if I can get this to focus. It is cables. And you can't see them real well because I've just done. There you go, right there. That's the first cable. So um, it's pretty easy. It's four by four ribbing, and I'm cabling up the the stockinette portions of the ribbing. So um, yeah, when I finish this, I will write this up as a pattern. So 
in the next week or so. That should be another pattern that'll be coming up for free because knitting patterns for hats are super simple because once you, uh, unlike a, a crochet hat where you start at the top and work down, knitted hats you usually start from the brim and work, or the, yeah, the ribbing and work up. So once you get your first repeat in, it's just basically repeat this so many, you know, X amount of times until you start the decreases. So, um, yeah, they're pretty easy to write. So this one will be coming out. Just be watching for it. And I will put a, I will put a post up on Facebook or whatever when it's done. And I'll tell you about it on the video too. So just be watching for that because that will be, that will be a video that will be coming up. So that's what I've been working on this week. What have you all been doing? Now, I don't have any acquisitions this week, but I, I realized I had not done What Am I Reading for a while. So I thought I would share two different things that I'm reading. Yes, I'm reading more than one thing. I always am reading more than one thing at a time. This one, the first one is actually an audio book because I like to have something to listen to in the car. I have like a 40 minute drive to and from work. So um, this is Murder, She Wrote. This is actually a Christmas one. I'm a little late to the game in this one. I missed this, this book coming out and I just discovered it. And it is called Murder in Season. And um, Jessica has just moved into her newly renovated house. And in the backyard, there are some bones from 200 years ago found as well as bones from a year ago and an old chest with some secrets in it from the founding fathers of Cabot Cove. 
So, um, and now, of course, people are dying in Cavett Cove because I, I think that it's the most, you know, there's the, all, every murder takes place in Cabot Cove, Maine, I think. Um, I would not want to live with Jess, near Jessica Fletcher because apparently murder follows her around. Um, but anyway, it is based on the TV series that was done back in the 80s with uh, Angela Lansbury. And it's a lot of fun. And I do, I'm, this new author is growing on me. Uh, for years, the author was a man called um, Donald Bain was the uh, author, and then he passed away. So the new guy that was writing it, the first book or two that he wrote were so far-fetched that it was absolutely absurd, and I debated whether to continue reading them or not. But apparently now he's getting into the swing of things, and he's listening to some of the feedback from people who have read the books, um, and has toned it down a little bit. And I mean, it, when I say toned it down, it wasn't like violent, it wasn't bad language, nothing like that. It was just the storyline was so absurd. It was just a little too far-fetched. Like they had, I think the one that I found the most absurd was when a barge hit the Portland headlight, which is a major lighthouse like on the back of the, well, it's not on the back of the main quarter, but, but it's like one of the most photographed lighthouses in the world. I've been there numerous times or whatever, but yeah, it was a little far-fetched. You don't go knocking down landmarks. But anyway, uh, since then he's doing better and I'm enjoying this story. Now, a book that I'm reading, actually it sits in my kitchen and I'm reading it while I'm cooking food. And no, I have not burned the food so far. So, which is good because you guys know, I cooking's not my strong point. Um, I can do it and Dave survived so far. Nobody's ever gotten po food poisoning, but cooking is not my favorite thing to do. My favorite cookbook is the uh, carryout menu, but you know, I can cook, believe it or not. But so I've been reading while I've been cooking lately. And this is a new series to me. It's called The Butterfly Conspiracy. It is by Vivian Conroy. And this is the first in a series. It's called The Merryweather and Royston Mystery. Sadly though, this was written three years ago and this is the only book in the series. So I'm thinking for whatever reason, she did not finish up the series. She only wrote the first book, which is a shame because I'm really enjoying this. Um, she has written some other series. She has quite a few other series. So if, if you would happen to read this and like it, there's other books that she's also written. I will probably check them out. But um, this particular one is, it takes place in the Victorian period and this one um, lady, she lives with her aunt and her uncle and her cousin, and she is into the study of butterflies and insects and things. But as a Victorian woman, she's not supposed to be interested in all those type of things. So she, she has this butterfly hatched and she takes it with her, her uncle to this um, like, men's organization where they they talk about different animals and species and all this stuff well she has to pretend like she's just accompanying her uncle he knows absolutely nothing about bugs she's actually the brainchild behind it but he takes her along so she's kind of he's kind of her cover um when she's the one actually doing all the studying but in the course of this evening she shows this butterfly it gets loose lands on another woman who's visiting there and the woman dies. And so her uncle is being blamed for this poisonous butterfly. And she's feeling guilty. And so this other gentleman and her are trying to solve the mystery of what really killed the lady that showed up at the, um, the insect bug meeting thing. So it's been really good so far and I'm enjoying it. So that's what I've been reading. If you guys have recommends for books, please stick them down in the comments down below because I'm always looking for stuff that's interesting. And I have a bunch of mysteries that I like to read that are yarn related, uh, but there's none that are new that have come out recently. I've, I'm totally caught up on all of them. So now I'm reading other things. So Wednesday's video, um, Renna Hanlon asked me when, we, when I put a video out a few I guess a month or so ago on different shawl shapes. She asked if I had made a Faroese shawl. 
and I have. It was not one of the ones I showed in that video. Um, I will stick a picture in of what a Faroese shawl is. Now, Faroese shawls traditionally are knitted, but you can make them. There are some crochet patterns for them out there as well. So make sure you come by on Wednesday to see the video because I'm going to talk about the typical characteristics of a Faroese shawl, what they are usually made out of, um, the technique that they are used to be made, um, what is special about them, and I'm going to hopefully find some free patterns for knit and crochet ones to stick in the description box so you guys can check them out for yourself. So that will be Wednesday's video this week. Now it's time for... Now in our come and get it section, I'm going to tell you what I am aware of on sale now, but as you all know, um, Lovecraft's Lion Brand and Annie's tend to do a lot of flash sales and I try to let you know about them when they come out. They are always a yellow video with black writing. So if you see that, you know it's some kind of a yarn sale that's going on that I've discovered. But I'll tell you what I do know about. Okay, the first one is Knit Picks. Now this is time sensitive because it actually ends today. So it ends on May 22nd. So if you are watching this on Saturday, this is the last day for the sale. It is 15% off site-wide. I've never seen them do a sale that it was site-wide like this, um, or at least not for a long time. I can't really remember ever seeing one, but they are doing 15% off site-wide. They still have their Felici yarn for 30% off right now while supplies last. Now the site-wide sale, like I said, it does end May 22nd, which is today. Uh, you do need to use a coupon code at checkout M-A-Y-15 to get that discount. Leisure Arts. Um, I thought since I'm making a knitted plaid afghan, I would send, I would put some pictures of some knitted and crocheted afghans that are done in plaid as well because I've made a crocheted plaid afghan as well. So I'm going to stick that down in the description bar if you click under Leisure Arts. Um, when I say description bar, right below the video is it tells what the video is about and then you see a little thing that says show more. If you click the show more, it opens up and it shows, it has links to everything I'm talking about. So just in case you never knew quite what I'm talking about when I say the description box, that's what it is. So um, that's Leisure Arts. I will put a the page in there. So if you click that link, it'll take you to the page with the crocheted and the knitted um, plaid afghans. Dollar Tree. Hmm. Dollar Tree has some premier yarns. Now they don't have the, the basics, but they have some other Just Yarn brand, which is premier. Now the interesting thing, you do have to buy an entire case of it, which used to be quite a bit of yarn. Enough to, I laughingly said, crochet wall-to-wall -wall carpeting because it was like over 100 skeins. Nobody's going to buy that much. Well, Apparently they're understanding that now because for the most part, I only found one exception and that was, I think it was cream colored yarn. It was cream or a light yellow color yarn. It, I think that's the only one they maybe didn't fix. All the other ones, you only have to buy between like six or 12 skeins of yarn. A dollar a skein, pretty good deal. Um, they're not big like this. They're not like 300 and some yards, but still a dollar a skein. Yeah, pretty good. So um, they even had some that were little mini skeins and you could get, I think it's 24 different colors. It would be $24. Um, but yeah. So anyway, you know, six to 12 skeins is totally doable because you could make an afghan with that or a sweater. So it's, it's a lot more reasonable. So just wanted to let you know when I checked that, it was like, yes, they finally are making something more reasonable out there. So that is Dollar Tree. Annie's has a sale running through the end of this month. It is up to 50% off of their clearance. Now I went over and looked. They don't have all that much yarn. Most, a lot of the yarn is sold out. There's some that isn't, but a lot of the yarn's already sold out. But they do have um, a lot of knit and crochet books. Yeah, 
I was I was very happy and some of these are up to 50% off so they've marked some of their clearance that was already down they've marked it down a little bit more so you don't need a coupon code because it's already been marked but just to let you know yeah there are knit and crochet books over there in the clearance section so check that out too because it was it was it was interesting yeah so so that is it for this week thank you once again for stopping by if you have enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up Otherwise, I will see you again on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.